right, so joining us from his home in the United States today is a distinguished doctor, urologist, and urological researcher, Dr. Kombiz Tash Karimi. Dr. Tash Karimi, uh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me today. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, Doctor, could you tell us a little bit about your background and about your work in the area of urology and urological research? Yes, I, I am a urologist in uh, Frederick, Maryland. I trained uh, at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. I work um, in general urology. However, my focus is prostate cancer treatment as well as sexual medicine. I am a member of the Sexual Society of North America and International Society for Sexual Medicine. And my research focuses mainly on um, treatment of erectile dysfunction, especially after prostate cancer treatments, as well as uh, ejaculatory dysfunction in men with spinal cord injury. I'm wondering if you can tell us, uh, right around the world, literally millions of men, in including men in their 30s and 40s now, are, are being diagnosed and treated for prostate cancer. Now, what's fairly well known is that most of these men who are treated, you know, through uh, radical prostatectomies and, and otherwise, most of these men are going to, uh, going to develop severe and chronic erectile dysfunction. W why is that? Well, uh, that's a very good question. Um, as you're aware, um, erectile function is a nerve-generated event. There are uh, uh, two very important nerves that run right next to the prostate as they travel from the spinal cord to the penis. These nerves are responsible for initiating, um, you know, um, activities within the penis during sexual excitation to provoke uh, dilation or uh, the blood vessels from to open up and allow the penis to fill with blood. Uh, these nerves are so close to the prostate then that any type of treatment, including surgery, radiation, or freezing, uh, can uh, damage these nerves. Now, our technique in the past 30 years has improved greatly, where we're now able to do the procedure in a much more careful way to identify the nerve structures as best as possible. But even with the best technique, we still have a problem with um, making the nerves to be fully functional after surgery. That's why a lot of men develop a temporary or permanent erectile dysfunction after surgery or radiation. I'm just wondering if you could explain in layman's terms what is required for an erection to take place? Because from what I understand, it's not just simply a matter of blood just rushing into the organ. It's quite a complex reaction, isn't it? Exactly. All the stars need to line up for a successful erection to occur. It, it's, a, it's a hormonal, neurological, blood, uh, hem, you know, uh, every system needs to work perfectly well for erections to occur. Erection is a neurovascular event. That means that the nerves of our body, um, they excite a specific center in your spinal cord that receive information from the brain and from the penis. Uh, let's say that you, uh, a patient or a person is, is smells a very nice, uh, you know, um, sexual scent or a touch of a woman or uh, any type of stimulation. Something uh, that leads to physical these, arousal, you're saying? Exactly. Sexual arousal. Physical yeah. arousal leads to a cascade of neurological events, nerve events, that sends signals to the penis to the, for the blood vessels to open up and allow the penis to enter. This is a very important part one of erection. The part two of erection is that the, nerve, that the blood vessels, as they fill the penis, they should be prevented from leaving the penis. So the blood is trapped for several minutes after excitation and adequate blood filling so the blood is trapped and rigidity occurs. And this is a, in many men who have developed erectile dysfunction, either there's a problem with filling or preventing the blood from leaving the penis. It could be vascular disease, diabetes, or venous dysfunction where the, the 
as many men cannot obtain rigidity no matter how much Viagra or Cialis they take because the blood fills and immediately leaves so they cannot obtain rigidity. So you, you've mentioned um, that it, it's a, a neurological, it's a nerve condition as well as um, a, you know a, a physiological or a condition where the, where the I should say the, the blood is filling up to the to the penis. If we link that back then to a prostatectomy, a radical prostatectomy, where is the disconnect there? What, why isn't the equipment working? Well, multiple studies in the past few decades at great centers in the U.S. and around the world have shown that uh, after a surgery, the nerves uh, develop neuropraxia, which is a fancy word for them to go to sleep. And the penis requires these nerves to constantly stimulate nighttime erections. And if these nighttime erections do not occur, the penis is basically not receiving enough uh, nutrients and uh, is not able to receive adequate oxygenation at nights, which is a you know part of our male physiology is to develop nighttime non-sexual erections. The penis is always in a in a hungry and a in a, a hypoxic state, which is a you know a word for lack of oxygen. So in men after prostatectomy, the first problem is lack of nerve function but if there is no adequate oxygenation for uh, several months the penis muscles the muscles of the blood vessels develop degeneration they basically start you know becoming dysfunctional and they start uh, not working well and men subsequently developed venous dysfunction is which is even when the nerves come back they still cannot get a good erection because they now they have a problem with with blood not wanting to stain the penis. So, so I, so I understand process, that they get problems in terms of scarring as well if if you're not having erections and uh. absolutely, absolutely. The the scarring has been shown in animal studies and in uh, in several human studies that basically the penile tissues develop uh, atrophy or uh, the smooth muscles die. And this is where the concept of penile rehabilitation it comes into effect. And this is a controversial issue where whether, you know, does penile rehab really do anything anyways? And in my opinion, it really does. Uh, by starting to stimulate and doing everything possible to allow nighttime filling of the penis and even daytime filling of the penis, you can prevent uh, progressive deterioration of the muscles and the health of the penis itself. I think there's a bit of confusion out there amongst men who they've gone and they've had uh, prostatectomy surgery. Some have paid you know, very big dollars to have had robotic surgery and they've come out of surgery and they say, well, you know, we've had full nerve sparing. So, you know, I understand that my nerves are fine. What, what isn't clear amongst a lot of these men is why there is nerve damage if, if the doctor or the urologist has claimed that the nerves themselves were spared. Can you just give us a little bit of information as to what's happened there? Well, uh, you're asking a secret uh, among the urologists that I'm going to share with you. We really don't know how much nerve we're going to spare. I perform about two to three prostatectomies a week and uh, I do them robotically and I, did them, I used to do them open as well. It is not the robot or open, it's the, uh, the technique of the surgeon. You can still have fantastic results with open surgeons. It's the experience of the surgeon. But return of sexual function depends on three factors. The age of the patient, the uh, pre-surgery uh, pre uh, sexual function, and also how much nerve sparing the surgeon thinks that they did. You know, they, if a male has a surgery at the age of 45, his return of sexual function is going to be different than someone who is, has it when he's 75. And obviously, if someone has excellent sexual function before surgery, most likely will have better uh, return of function than someone who is already dependent on Viagra, 100 milligrams for a uh, not a very strong erection. The nerve sparing is dependent on the lack of excessive pulling 
burning and stretching of the areas that we think the nerves are located. However, even with perfect technique, the, these nerves are going to go to sleep. So the, your, uh, your listeners need to understand the following. If the surgeon says, I did bilateral nerve sparing, your erections are not going to come back for several months. You just have to accept it. It's like a cyclist or a runner who, you know, who trips on, this, on the road and breaks his ankle is not going to start running again in, for several months. And that's exactly what's happening in prostatectomy. You're not going to have erection for several months. So just accept it and focus on several months from now, am I going to do everything that I can to get back to normal?